Hi everybody, thanks for watching this. I wanted to tell you this is a little time sensitive. Greetings dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. This evening I wish to expose a very important system to you in ways we have not before. We're going to call it the beginning of the information about innate. We have given channels before and one of them was the mysterious innate. We have given you some of the attributes about your own body. And we wish to enhance it tonight. I have been giving information to my partner. And he receives it through intuition. He's even begun to build a program around it. And yet it's never been publicly channeled. It is the integrity of the way that I work with him that says that many of these things should be put to you and given to you so that you can hear it and analyze it at the same time he begins to teach it so that others will know what he knows as he begins his process as well all that to say the dear ones it is time for teaching to begin which is beyond what you had in the past it starts to identify and show you some of the grandness inside earlier today I said I know who's here it is a family that I speak to at the room it is a family who listens to these channelings and I again broach the timelessness of what we are doing the information presented here will last a long time and there will be those hearing it right now for the first time and yet much time will have passed since it was given in your time and it will be as new to them as it is to you the energy will be just as fresh and I say to you that in this timeless this timeless attribute of the reality that I am in I see the potentials of all listeners forever I know who's listening that may be difficult for you dear ones I want to tell you about a process in your body not only mysterious to you because it is one that does not present itself in 3D but elusive for you don't know how to get to it really not completely and yet it belongs to you so well that it is you and you might ask how can something be inside me cryon that I don't know about and I will say yet again to you that you are not working at full capacity and that this is the subject of this year the recalibration of humanity includes an evolved spirit and we're going to talk a little more about that in this channeling but let us first identify innate what makes innate so mysterious to you is that it is not a brain function it is perhaps one of the only systems in the body that is not centralized this is difficult it has not been discovered it is not known in medical science but it has been seen over and over what you have in DNA is very difficult to explain 
The trillions of DNA molecules in your body are all in communication with each other all the time. This has to be the way of it. If you think about what DNA does, how does your body know which kind of cell it needs and where it needs it? It is innate that is responsible for that literally at birth. The DNA, you might say, is truly esoteric central control. It is the field around the trillions of pieces of DNA that knows itself as one entity. The one entity is innate. So you might say that it is the combination of the DNA cells in your body seen as one thing that is what you call smart body innate. It is decentralized. There is no one organ of the body that is responsible for innate. Every single part of the body is involved in smart body systems. You're used to finding out things through innate with muscle testing, the kinesiology, the tapping, all of the other systems that give you what we will call smart feedback. In order to find out what the smart body wants to tell you. And those who facilitate this know that they are talking to a field in the body and not an organ, not a gland, not the brain. So the first thing we want to tell you about innate is that it is body-wide. Anything that has DNA in you and it's usually that which you can can think of perhaps a, a major part of you, like the heart. You feel you're talking to that, but you're not. Innate is in your toenail and <laughs> in your hair. Innate is everywhere DNA is in any form that DNA exists. It's unique and it's you. Now I've told you that medical science has seen this, but they don't understand it. So let me give you the example. When a human being has the spinal cord severed in an accident, it is severed. We have talked about this before. Isn't it odd that it doesn't grow back? When everything else in the body is programmed to regenerate, the cells do not regenerate in a way where the nerves grow back. We have also told you there will be a a time when it does and that this is all part of the evolved human that is coming but let us talk about the way it is now let us see that you know or have seen a paraplegic a man or a woman in a chair who can move nothing but their head now does it make sense to you that all of the nerves are severed in the spinal cord and yet the things in the body that depend on the brain signals continue to work. The heart continues to beat, but you are told that the heart needs the brain to send the signals. You're told that the timing is in the brain for the signals to be in the right pattern. Digestion continues. Reproduction continues. Most of the body functions below the neck are uninterrupted and yet the brain is not sending signals anymore. How do you explain it? Medical science actually has a word for it. And the word would indicate that something takes over innately in the body. It's innate. <laughs> It is the DNA that keeps you alive. The DNA of this body 
actually connects with the brain and the signals are still sent in a quantum way. Remember, the DNA field is in connection with the full body all the time even though the spinal cord is severed. The brain continues to send the signals, the DNA field receives them and sends them to the heart, to the digestive, everything but the muscles. I ask you to look at this and you'll know that I am right. So you have proof of this innate, the smart body will keep you alive. Even if the wires to the brain are severed. Innate is smart. It is why we call it the smart body. The innate is smarter than that which you will call the survival organ which is the brain. Innate is connected to something you should know about. Innate is connected to the higher self. Innate is connected to the Akashic record of the human being because in the DNA those things are there. We gave you information so long ago about the layers of DNA and now we're telling you that there is a cumulative DNA consciousness in its field called innate. It's time for you to think of your DNA as one thing, not trillions of things. Science does not even acknowledge that DNA can communicate with itself. And yet it has to, in order for you to work the way you work. The beauty of what we are teaching is this, is that the corporeal body, the one that the brain controls, is beginning to build a bridge to innate. And this bridge is going to be through intuition and will create eventually a time where you will be your own medical intuitive, where you will know not only what is going into your body and what is going on in your body, but also what's going on in your Akash. I have three things I want to describe to you today. None of them are a review. Not really. They're a revelation. I want to tell you what innate does and I want to tell you that innate has programming. Innate is programmed for something you should know. Whereas the human brain is programmed for corporeal survival, innate is programmed for spiritual survival. You might ask, what is the mandate? What is the prime directive, if you want to use that terminology, for the human soul? Why are you here? <laughs> Your brain keeps you alive, dear ones. It helps you with everyday existence. It tries to keep you safe. It remembers what doesn't work day to day, corporally. But innate, I want you to think for a moment about what innate knows. Innate knows what the ancients knew. How long humanity had on this planet before it would have to make a decision. Innate knows that. Your DNA knows that. What is the prime directive of innate? To do everything it can for you to allow an awakening to take place, to allow humanity to go across the bridge and move into an ascended planet status. That is the prime directive. Spiritual survival, everything is designed around that. To push you forward in any way possible into spiritual awareness, that is what innate is for. In the process, innate also crosses the bridge with corporeal chemistry. 
in very, very different ways. Innate is responsible for spontaneous remission. <laughs> you want to know where that comes from? How can you have a disease disappear overnight? How is it possible that the corporeal body can react and cleanse itself of something so unbalanced overnight? How can tissue grow at an accelerated rate to give healing overnight? I have just given you things that the hospitals have seen over and over. They have x-rayed them. There is no way, they would say. And yet, it is a miracle. No, it isn't. It's innate. That's the power that you have. When innate finally starts to build the bridge to the corporeal self, the human being as you know it will disappear. And the one that takes its place will have a long life, able to repair itself, even grow limbs back. That is how it was designed, dear ones. That should make sense to you. But let's talk about it today. Cryon Book One. All those years ago, I talked about something that innate is responsible for. I said, it's time to drop your karma. Where is karma stored? <laughs> it is a result of past life experience pulled forward through the veil into a reincarnate body. It is an energy of unfinished business. That's karma. It's in the DNA and innate governs it. And so when we said it's time to drop your karma, how did we say to do it? You must talk to your body, talk to your cells and say, I am done with the energy of the past. I drop the karma. I move forward. These were the first instructions you ever had from me about a process that crosses the bridge from the corporeal self to the innate pure intent. You address your body in a way that is so pure that the body sees it and acts. And that is how karma is dropped. Now I want you to see what was not stated. Would it make sense to you that as you come into an energy as an old soul where karma is no longer needed, wouldn't the smart body innate drop it by itself? And the answer is no. Now listen, because this is the teaching of the day. You see, innate, as smart as it is, is also programmed. And it's programmed in a survival for spiritual self. And karma has always played a part in that. You have got to deprogram innate. It has a bias. It's been doing this as long as you've been a human. It was designed to do certain things in a certain way. And consciousness is the key to change it. It always was. It always will be. Your free choice is needed to deprogram what I will call the instruction sets of an eight. So dropping your karma was the first instruction we ever gave you. Now there's more. And it gets more complicated. Innate is programmed to try to keep you into spiritual survival and there is an older system in innate that it still has and you've got to deprogram it. This reprogramming, you might say, through consciousness is not hard. Your consciousness through pure intent is king. 
You've always known you can change your chemistry, heal your body. Talking to innate is the key. How would you like to trigger your own spontaneous remission? Think about that. You can do it. This is the next step, dear ones. Talking to a cellular structure and controlling your chemistry is one thing. Controlling innate is another. It's you. You have permission. We told you some things in a channeling recently. We told you that affirmations are important. Now, affirmations are not repetitive phrases of meaningless consequence. And you know the difference. If you've memorized things that people told you to memorize, and mindlessly you repeat them over and over in order to accomplish a certain number of times, nobody is listening. <laughs> nobody. Because it is not seen as anything but verbose conversation with yourself. <laughs> That's it. Consciousness that is focused is pure intent. You mean it. Affirmations, especially the ones you create yourself out of your own consciousness, put to your body on a regular time schedule on purpose. You have an appointment with your innate and you're going to talk to it and here is the affirmation. And that is the way it works. You must talk to your innate as your best friend, as a human being sitting in front of you, and you're going to have a, a conversation. Would you, would you then just repeat things over and over to another person? And the answer is no. You would give them the credibility of intelligence to listen. That is the credibility you must have with innate. Innate is your smart body. And it's time for you to reprogram what it thinks is your spiritual survival because innate has not crossed that marker with you. Your consciousness has crossed into this new energy and now it's time for you to reprogram everything. Recalibration, dear ones, is not automatic. Old soul, there are a few things you should know. Do you find it interesting that innate knows all about your past lives, but you don't? How is that for a system? <laughs> How would you like to know more? What is it that you have in your past lives that you could use today? We've talked about this. Mining the Akash is done through free choice of consciousness talking to your innate. Muscle testing, yes. Tapping, body talk, affirmations, whatever you can do that circumvents the corporeal logic of the human brain will work for innate. You have got to think different. You are used to quantity, repetition, loudness perhaps you're used to linear concepts to change things within you allopathic no homeopathy counts on innate to work did you know that a tincture sends a signal to the smart body to make the changes that the tincture has intent for that's the reason for homeopathy remedies. They're designed specifically to send a signal to an ape. Do they work? Oh, yes. You see, there's a whole concept of who you are that lurks in a place that we're asking you to connect to. If you connect to a Nate, you can start finding out about who you used to be. Innate will give you what you need to know because it's smart. You can ask innate who you were in a past life and it will not tell you if it is not important 
for your spiritual survival. <laughs> but it will give you karma to push you into areas that it thinks you need for spiritual survival. So let us talk about what you have to reprogram, which is the biggest issue of innate. Number one, drop your karma. <laughs> we say it again. That is number one. What is it that continues to push you around, dear ones, that is the, the Achilles heel of your personality? What is it that, that is there that you just don't understand why it's there? I'll tell you it's the energy of the past. Get rid of it. Innate will do what you tell it. If it sees that which is spiritual logic, and it will, because this channel... And Nate is listening to, along with you. You are the consciousness trigger to change your own innate. What is it that innate is built to do that makes no sense at all? And I'm going to tell you right now, with everyone listening. Dear ones, there is a system called reincarnation that is the engine at the moment for spiritual advancement on the planet. You live a lifetime, you learn certain things, and you die. You are reborn into the planet, and in your DNA, Akash, or I'll say the well of wisdom, it is there. And it presses upon you, so you will not necessarily do the same thing again. An old soul knows better. In so many things that a new soul does not. You see newbies on the planet, and they can't make heads or tails out of anything. You've been there and done that. Every single lifetime builds a library of wisdom. As you sit in the chair today, you know you're an old soul. You do. Now, here is what innate has learned the system requires. Are you ready? Death. <laughs> In order for you to graduate and pick up the wisdom and move forward into a higher spiritual consciousness, potentially in the next life, whether you do it or not, the potential only exists with death and rebirth. Are you starting to see where this is going? Innate, on purpose, will give you short lifetimes. <laughs> what a system! Suddenly, suddenly, you pass the marker. You come to a place where the Pleiadians knew you would be. You have the ability for the first time to do what we saw you could do 25 years ago when I came to this planet in my partner and wondered whether his stubbornness would ever allow a message like this. I want all of you to start telling innate that you don't need to die in order to capture the ideas that you are being given now of an advanced spiritual thought. That in the same lifetime that you live without death, you now have the ability of capturing wisdom and moving forward. You don't need to die. You don't need to reincarnate. You can do it by yourself. You have that in your DNA. It's starting to increase. By the time you get to 36, do the numerology. It's done. You now have the ability to stay. Innate doesn't know that. Thousands of years. It has been progressing your spiritual growth by short lifetimes. I hope I'm under. I'm, my partner is understanding this, giving you this in a way you can see. What if you didn't have to do this this way? And Nate needs to know it. Longer lifetimes are the key. Doesn't it make sense, dear ones, logically to you? That you can accomplish more on this planet if you don't have to be reborn and grow up all over again. 
stay. Some of you carry around what we will call a near-death experience potential. Now, this is a time when perhaps the karmic part of you saw your death. The potential exists for a synchronicity that pushes you right into what innate thinks you need. <laughs> time for completion. Because you need to be reborn and get on with it because that's the only engine it has ever known for you to carry the wisdom over the veil. And now, as you start to touch the higher self, you can bring it into your current lifetime. You can have the aha experience. Some of you can be brought to your knees and come out with a completely different personality. And it's happened to those who are listening to this right now. Who were you 15 years ago? Or the same one? You think the same way, you do the same things. There are many on this earth who will say, yes, I'm the same person. Of course I am. That's the way I was born. No, you. Because you know you've changed your personality. You've changed your human nature. You've even changed your corporeal structure. There are those in here who have stopped aging. <laughs> That's what this is about. The key to stopping the aging process as you know it today is by communicating to the innate and saying you don't have to die to have a spiritual growth. And you can do that any way you want. Learn how to build affirmations that are positive. Get in touch with the body through whatever process starts to come your way. Where you can communicate and you know you are to that smart body. And let me tell you, you don't have to convince it. It knows it. As soon as it sees the progress that you have made in your consciousness, it's a done deal. Did you hear that? Innate knows who you are. It's the smart body. It wants to cooperate. As soon as it sees a new avenue of spiritual evolution, you may live a lot longer than you want to. <laughs> so that's the next thing. Stay healthy while you, while you don't age. <laughs> Is it complicated? No. Is it filled with love? Yes. Is it new? Yes. I just gave you an attribute. I... I've never been able to give humanity. And you heard it for the first time tonight. And you had to cross the veil to get this. That veil of the 2012 energy in past 2013 into 2014. I knew I could do it this year. It's time you knew the truth. That you're in control of even time on this planet. That's how powerful you are. You're going to see it. And then you'll believe it. Not all of you are able to do it with the same, same strength. That's because each of you are individuals. Dear ones, I know who you are. The old souls of this planet awake. Awaken to the new processes of a new kind of life. And in the process, don't be afraid of what you see around you. Because there will be those who don't agree, who can't do it, who don't understand it. Sometimes the difference that you are will frighten them. Not forever. Because there will come a time when all humanity will know what I'm teaching tonight. And so it is. So as you sit shoulder to shoulder in this small space together and feel the connection of family and the blessings of this family. So take another breath in about that with me. And isn't that nice? And what a, what a beautiful opportunity to sit shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart to all together have our feet planted on our beautiful Gaia in this magical place, in 
the crystal beds and the water of Berkeley Springs and the heart and the soul of this land and the people here and the energy that brought us all together today. So just let yourself feel more deeply into that, out of your head and into your body and the energy, the energy that the facts carry, the energy that interests you is what draws you here. And if you didn't know what you were coming for today, perhaps these days following will unfold that for you as you learn more about your intuitive voice and as you experience more synchronicities that lead you to more love and more family and more opening in the heart, in the soul, and in the hands of spirit. So as we welcome the information and the guidance of the cryon energy, we also express gratitude from the deepest parts of ourselves, welling up through us, through our feet, through Gaia, out through the top of our heads, connecting us to that beautiful, loving, cosmic vibration that we share. Greetings, dear ones. I'm crying on a magnetic service. This communication, the channeling of today, will be a little different. The difference is that you need to hear an overview. I'm going to call it the overview of the future, and yet the very term future is elusive. It's not about the future that is immediate, it's about the future of the planet. This is the kind of channel that my partner has trouble with because the things that are delivered are delivered outside of the purview of his three-dimensional brain. He receives these kinds of messages some, sometimes in duplicate and triplicate at the same time he's talking to you he gets other messages so he can enhance it this is the best we can do to give a multi-dimensional message to a three-dimensional brain and so he struggles sometimes and if it takes place he'll simply back up and give it again it's the kind of message that you wish to review and listen to again. It's the kind of message that you might put in a time capsule. The kind that is a human time capsule so that you might open it and understand it more fully when things have changed. It's not going to be a long channel. But it's going to be one filled with information of the kind that we not necessarily have given before. Pieces and parts of it have been alluded to. We want to paint a picture of a bigger picture. My partner talks about the shift, I talk about the shift. My partner is giving lectures on what is next, but his lectures are the pablum to what is next. But he gives it to a humanity that goes step by step and only begins to move into new areas of understanding as they examine the old ones and try to decipher what could be different. And it's slow. But that's where it begins. And if I could, I would preface all of this by telling you that what is going on on earth at this moment, we have seen before. Dear ones, if you could compare the galaxy and all of the planets 
that have gone through this before as a school, this would be the graduation of the first step. And as we have looked at what has taken place in this galaxy with others before you, we know what's coming. Because the steps that are next for you are the same steps that were taken before. What you describe as human consciousness isn't. It's consciousness. <laughs> it only belongs to the human because you're human. It's the same kind of thing, energy. The attributes and the confluences of the energies are almost identical that the consciousness that the other planets have gone through. And the reason is because life is similar. Some almost identical from planet to planet to planet because the galaxy is made up of fractals. From the smallest to the largest you're going to see repetitive parts of the same thing. It's a beautiful system. And what it means is it gives rise on other planets. One, perhaps right now, that's just getting life. The building blocks of DNA getting ready to be seeded by you <laughs> in the future. DNA. Same kind as you have. The same amino acid structures as you have is common to all. So we've seen this before. You're a young civilization, dear one. A young. So young it's hard to even give you a perspective of how young. Your civilization hasn't even been around the galaxy one time yet. Hardly. The almost 200 million years that it takes to go around one time, one rev, there are societies and civilizations that have been around three revs. The Pleiadians have a rev. Hmm. To tell you how old some life is in this galaxy, way before you, some of them visit you. None of them None of them are able to influence you to the degree that you can influence yourselves. Galaxy teems with life. And you're well hidden, by the way. We've seen this before. I want to tell you a bigger picture. Your youth and how young you are starts to explain why the earth has been through such a horrendous time. Civilization looks ugly to you. Your past and your history filled with survival and killing, weaponry, mass destruction, no elegance of thought for life, torture. They all went through that. They all did. Because civilization builds itself as your children build themselves as a metaphor through life. There comes a time, and we've said it before, where a child becomes self-aware and the ego takes over and all they think of is themselves and survival. On the playground at school, some of them become bullies just to survive. Some of them never get over it. And they're bullies as adults because they never moved into the elegance of the wisdom that you have. As you grow up, there, there becomes a knowledge and a wisdom that occurs to you that there's a better way to solve problems through listening and cooperation. You have to, to survive. But the children don't know that. And they will flail. And generation after generation, you bring up children and they'll do the same thing. And they'll go through the terrible twos and the thrashing threes in the teenage years and it's over. And hopefully they'll grow up. 
And if I could be so simplistic to apply this to human civilization, let me do it. You're still on the playground. You're still pushing each other around. You're still getting reactions. You're still in survival. Until about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even 50 where it started to shift just a little. We have told you over and over, I'm not going to visit it again, what the timetable was, what the calendar said, why I'm here. No, I want to go further than that in this particular channel. I want to talk to you about energy not seen. We're going to talk about this in two places in this channel, and this is the first. Energy not seen. There is a complement of energy in the galaxy that interests you and you can't see it. But you want to. Because it touches you in ways that are fascinating. This unseen energy is responsible for what the New Agers sense first. You're able to pick up energy in someone's aura, somehow, some way. A medical intuitive can actually feel what is wrong. The aura broadcasts sickness, health, joy. What is that? Wouldn't you like to bottle it and take it home and analyze it? And you can't. The very institute that puts this event on, so interested in these energies, unseen energies that make a difference. What is it a reader reads or a psychic feels or a futurist can futurize? Where does it come from? Why is it so elusive? And I'm going to tell you in just a moment a little bit more about this. For it's the key to the future. A child would not know about the elegance of wisdom. How to put things together instead of tearing them apart. A child who is ego driven, who is only waking up to being self aware, is only going to do what the child does. The only equipment the child has in its very elementary way is going to lash out in certain ways and do certain things. And if you gave them a plate of wisdom, they'd look at it and they'd have no idea what it was and throw it away. This is all about to change. Because this unseen energy has attributes you don't know anything about and you're discovering. First of all, everything about this unseen energy which we call the quantum consciousness of humanity is starting to enhance itself so that it'll be a little more obvious. If I took you to another civilization like the Pleiadian, like the Orion, the Arcturian, if I took you to any of those you would not recognize anything. First of all, they don't have technology. How about that? Because physical things that do things, they threw away long ago when they realized that the physics of human consciousness could do everything they ever wanted. That's where it's going. And you still wonder what it is. Truly, what is this? How does it work? Is it quantitative? If you have more of it, does it do more things? And the answer is no. Now, we have given you some hints about it. Human consciousness has no succinct definition I could give you that would make any sense at all. Because we have told you that less than one percent, one half percent of humanity has to awaken in a certain way to affect the entire planet. Now that ought to tell you it's not quantitative. It's not 3D, is it? 
less than one half of one percent. <laughs> if you really want to know the numbers, if you need the numbers, that ought to tell you something. It's not about how many of you there are, dear ones. It really isn't. Because there is something hiding here. There is a system, a, a confluence of systems that you don't know anything about. So let's talk about them. Now, this is not going to be understandable to all of you. That is why you're going to listen to this again if you choose. And others will put it in a time capsule if they choose. And these things may very well pop up later and you'll go, oh. How do you explain the internet to somebody who's never seen a computer? Where do you begin? How do you explain the elegance of a race car to somebody who hasn't invented a wheel yet? And this is the issue. How do I tell you about what you have no concept of and you're not ready to know because you've got to walk through the steps? So let me give you some building blocks and some metaphors. There's something called a wisdom barrier. The wisdom barrier is what we have described as what happens in human consciousness when certain attributes occur that are not quantitative. That is to say, it's not about how many. It's about other things that will occur within the physics of consciousness that you don't know yet anything about this system that must occur in a certain way. In a distributed way, not a centralized way, in order to break this barrier called the wisdom barrier. And when it is broken, what it tells us is that humanity has passed a point where it is in survival mode and goes to a mode that starts to build the wisdom of getting along. The wisdom that enhances the brains of all humanity to a point where they can agree on something that they never even knew before without actually having it taught. Did you hear that? Now you didn't expect that. It surrounds the human being in such a way and the civilization in such a way that when you're born it becomes second nature. The wisdom of getting along. It's called the wisdom barrier. And let me tell you what's happening. You, you're there. And it's not going to give you fireworks or sparks in the sky. There's not going to be a celebration. There's not going to be balloons. Except on my side of the veil. And there's all of those. You're looking into the very essence of it. You are peeking into what makes it work. You're about to push the envelope that will affect all humanity. Not just the light workers, not just the old souls. You're about to push a button on physics you didn't know existed. Now this is a biggie. The missing piece. How do I explain this? My partner go very slow. Humanity explains things only from what they know, not what they don't know. Here's an example. You look into space. Science looks into space and they find attributes they cannot explain that do not seem to be Newtonian. But Newtonian physics is the gold standard of motion everywhere. And so the human being struggles to find formulas that will put the unexplained into Newtonian boxes. Welcome to dark matter. You're going to laugh later. <laughs> and we have told you this before, but this is the human propensity. Take what is known. Observe what is unknown but there and place it into the boxes of the known. Even if they're convoluted, even if they don't make sense, even if they're mysterious. 
instead of looking and saying maybe just maybe there are missing laws of physics we don't know about that would explain this and that and this and that well, let me tell you one of the biggest places places that you're missing the place of the physics of consciousness listen to me how do you define consciousness well it's developed through very special thought of humans and this and that no it isn't consciousness is physics and you should get used to this you are developing it through human thought unaware that there are rules of consciousness and it is a part of quantum physics there are rules, there are postulates, there are beautiful, beautiful attributes of the physics of consciousness that are going to start to explain what's going to happen in the future, but you don't see it that way. The missing piece is the knowledge that you can track this, that you can plot it, you can create it even outside of humanity. Did you know that? It's beautiful because when I start to tell you some of the attributes of the physics of consciousness, you're going to go, oh, what are the attributes of physics? What do you know? The, at the answer is actually very little, but what you do know, you experiment with, you create things. The very technology that you have that is so beautiful on this planet is brought to you by the knowledge of the physics that you know. And that there's cause and reaction. You build this and this happens. You put together certain kinds of things and through all of, the, all of the principles and the rules that you understand and the four basic laws that you have out of six, you know what they are and you're using them. Beautiful. Now what if I told you that that same scenario exists in consciousness? There are laws of consciousness that are just like the laws of physics in that there's causal, there's effect. But in a quantum world, they're not linear. And so they create certain kinds of things. The physics of consciousness being quantum and not linear creates attributes that are going to create the future of this planet. And now, my partner, it gets hard. Because I'm showing my partner things right now and he can't, he can't verbalize this. So I'm going to say, do your best. He sees the emotion of it. And he goes, oh, if you knew the physics of consciousness, you can build a better world. Mm -hmm. It has attributes. First of all, it does not travel from place to place. It does not travel in a straight direction. It does not travel. Consciousness is not in one place going to another. Consciousness does not expand. It does not get bigger or smaller. Consciousness is. Consciousness of physics, just like attributes of physics, sit there ready to be enhanced or not based upon other laws around it. And when they're applied, then they all change. Consciousness. Let me tell you about a couple of them. One is called the benevolence factor. Did you know that as the physics of consciousness is explored and the wisdom factor is applied and the barrier is passed, what happens next is an exponential understanding and application of the rules of consciousness that create a factor which generates benevolent action. Oh, that's convoluted, my partner. Can you say that better? Let me tell you this way. Right now on this planet, there's a struggle between forces. Because of the consciousness that you have developed here, and the rules that you have put in place through the physics of consciousness, there is an allowance right now 
of many things on this planet that we've never talked about. Is there evil on the planet? Yep. Are there entities dedicated to come in and mess with you? Yes. That's, is that shocking? And why is that? And why would that be? Because this test allows it. Because what you have created in the physics of consciousness and the rules that have applied and how you're using it, allow it. But the next step past the wisdom barrier enhances those, those very patterns of consciousness that you're going to discover as part of physics that close the door. Did you get that? When the rules of physics are applied in certain situations, you can control what happens. It's the same in consciousness. When you reach a point of understanding the physics of consciousness, how it works, the mechanics of it, the distribution of it. Listen, I'm giving my partner something and he's going to say it and it's not going to make sense to anything. The spiral delivery of it. Now that's going to make sense to somebody. You shut the door. And the things that have visited this planet can't anymore. And those places of darkness that will want to come in and play with your consciousness because it's at the teenage level of physics can't get in. That's the best explanation we have for what is going to happen in the future. And the Pleiadians are jumping up and down because they know what happened. It's almost an exponential evolution if you want it to be. One thing leads to another. It builds on itself. You don't have to start all over every single time you're born, like my partner described today. You come in with the factors that you learned before and build upon them. If I could use the term born wise, I would. And it's going to change everything. And then when the physics is revealed, you'll understand why there are machines that can work with consciousness. But you're not going to need them. Not long. How many generations are required, Cryon? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. The reason is I don't want to give you a setup that will spoil the party. Because every single planet has had its own time cycle of the delivery of this through their own free choice. How does it work? How fast does it work? When will it start? It's already started. You are at the wisdom barrier. Once you are at the wisdom barrier, I would like to tell you that the track record of all the planets who have reached the wisdom bearer are the same. They all move forward. Every single one. You threw a switch. And no amount of dark energy can stop it. Oh, it'll try. I've told you that before. Humans invested in old ways. Like the kids on the playground who don't want to grow up. They'll flail. Don't bully until their last breath. But they will awaken in a world and they haven't got a chance to do it again. And this is what we're talking about. The benevolent factor, the wisdom barrier, these things start to work in the laws of the consciousness of physics in ways that you will indeed figure out creating increased DNA percentage activation, creating a generation after generation, eventually, I won't tell you how long, of a human being who can create things out of nothing, who have control over physics, which is a lower kind of physics. The highest kind of physics is consciousness. And consciousness physics can control 3D physics any day. I'll wrap this up by telling you all of you are going to be there to see it. All of you. 
every single one. Because that is the plan, old soul. You come back and you enter a world that you always wished you could have. Peace on earth? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that just, that's the beginning. That's planting the seeds. That's a given. Look at your news. It's not gonna, it's not gonna look like it, is it? That's just today. Peace on earth. <laughs> that's not the goal. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> That's just a given. When you grow up and you're an adult, you stop throwing stones at each other on the playground. You stop. You're, you have an, a more elegant idea. That's peace on earth. That's the beginning. The very beginning. And then it gets good. This is what we see. I've never said these things in this way. I wanted you to hear the full story. What would happen to a civilization that could create anything it wanted physically, was never hungry, who could live as long as they wanted to, could put themselves in a quantum state if they wanted to, who had different sets of ideas of the way things should work, who had no central control. Did you hear that? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a managerless corporation? It's like that. And you would say, oh, that can't work. <laughs> oh, yes, it can. <laughs> That's what you're headed for. Government decentralized to where there is none. There will be no such thing as world government, dear ones. Instead, there will be world consciousness agreement. <laughs> You'll know better. How about that? What happens to a group of adults who go to a party for the first time and they've never met each other? What do they do? Throw rocks at each other? No, there's a consciousness of the party. They get together. They talk to each other. They have fun. What about a planet that had just that? They're born into a situation where they know better. That's the wisdom factor. That's the barrier you're crossing. It allows you to throw away any other system you ever thought you needed. Especially the ones that organize you into groups to do things. It will be second nature. You'll all know together. Too good to be true? Hmm. Ask a Pleiadian. Ask those from Orion. Ask those from Octorius. Ask any planet of free choice. Because they're all looking at you right now. This room is filled with them. And they're nodding their heads and say, right on, right on, right on. You just wait. <laughs>